All right, I'm gonna share two more things in this tutorial that you need to know when working with images in GIMP, and that is how to scale your image, larger or smaller, so you have the proper size when posting online, and also how to save your image in GIMP, because it's a little bit different than what you would do in Photoshop. There's something you have to do specifically in order to save your image as a JPEG or a PNG file, and I'm gonna show you how to do that in this tutorial. So let's go ahead and take a look at this image again and what we're going to do is we're going to scale it down smaller so it's the recommended size based on what Facebook or Instagram tells us our image should be. So I did a quick Google search for Facebook post sizes and it shows it right here but if you want the other ones if you come down here and find this hootsuite.com post it's been updated for 2022 and then you can scroll down here and then you'll see the different sizes for Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn. So landscape, portrait, and square images, we're gonna have 1200 by 630 or 630 by 1200 or 1200 by 1200. So 1200 is the maximum width or height that you need. Anything larger is going to take up extra hard space on your hard drive because you're using images that are too large for Facebook anyways, or at least what they recommend. And what Facebook is going to do is they're going to compress that image down smaller anyways. So you might as well start off with the size that they recommend. And I'm going to give you a pro tip on which file format I recommend when posting to Facebook. Now, if you're going to do a story, you can go a little bit larger, 1080 by 1920. All right, so we know our width for this image because it is the landscape is 1200 pixels wide. So let's go ahead and resize this image smaller by going up to image and selecting scale image. So from here, you wanna make sure you have this little icon turned on. So it should look like this. And when you type in 1200 for the width and hit your tab key, it's going to automatically adjust the height to 800, which is going to keep the image in proportion. Now, down here, we have a resolution of 300, which again is too large for online use. 300 is for print, and then 72 is for online use. I'm gonna click my tab key, and it's going to update the Y resolution. Now, when I click scale, it should resize the image. And what I wanna do now is I want to fill in the window with this image like it was before, it's too small. So to fix that, we can go up to view, zoom and select fit image in window or you can use this keyboard shortcut which is shift plus command or control if you're on a pc plus the letter j so that fills it back into the workspace all right so what we need to do now is we need to crop the image so it's 1200 by 630 pixels tall versus the 800 pixels tall it is right now that being said you don't have to do that you can actually post the image as it is right now, but it's not going to show all 800 pixels of the image. It's only going to show 630 pixels. And then when somebody clicks on that image, they'll see the full size and the full resolution of that image. So if you want to keep the image cropped to the recommended size that Facebook gives us, you can go up to image, click on canvas size, and then we can crop the canvas from here. So this time, since we don't want the image to stay in proportion, we're going to undo this option here so it looks like this. Then we're gonna type in the height, which is 630. You're gonna click your tab key, and then down here we have our thumbnail preview. And once you click that tab key, it's going to update with a new preview showing where the image is going to be cropped. So right now, she's going to be cropped across her shoulders and her neck right here. We don't want that. I want the full body. So I'm gonna click and drag up to make sure the entire subject is in the frame. And then when you click resize, it will recrop that image. Now we do have this yellow and black dashed line around the image, and that is known as the layer boundary. So this is letting you know that we have pixels within the image that are still available. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn this final edit layer off. And then with my move tool, which you can grab with the letter M, you can click and reposition the image to recompose it as needed. So those pixels were not deleted permanently. Now, in order to save this to be used on Facebook or Pinterest or anywhere else, 
you need to save the file as a JPEG or a PNG file. Now, if we go up to File and click on Save As, it's not going to give you the option to save it as a JPEG file. So if I type in JPEG and click Save, I'm gonna get this little message right here that says the given file name cannot be used for saving. You can use this dialog to save to the GIMP XCF file format, which is a proprietary file format for GIMP, which is similar to the PSD files that we use in Photoshop. So XCF is for saving files with layers. I'm gonna go ahead and click OK. And I'm gonna cancel out of this because we can't save a JPEG with that window. So we need to go back to file. And this time, instead of save, save as, or save a copy, we're going to select export as. Now I can save it as a JPEG file. But for Facebook, what I like to do is I like to save it as a PNG file. And that's because PNG files are not compressed. JPEG files will give you an option in GIMP to compress the file based on the quality setting that you give it. So in Photoshop, that could be 80, 90, 100, or whatever you want. And then when you upload that file to Facebook, Facebook is going to compress that file again, and then you end up losing information in the image, and you can have what is known as color banding, which gives the illusion that there is a sharp change from one color to another, and it looks like there's little bands in your sky, for example. And that's because there's not enough colors from one color to another. So the transition from, let's say, a dark blue sky to a light blue at the horizon, there's not enough colors within that particular sky, and that creates the banding effect. Well, that comes about from compressing the file one too many times. So short story is <laughs> use PNG file if you want a higher quality image or if you're noticing that you're getting that kind of banding in your image and then you can click on export here and then you're going to get another window here with some other options and i like to just keep everything set as is now even though it says it's compressing at a level of nine that's okay it's still better than what you're going to get with a jpeg file and then once you click export it's going to export that file and then you can upload it as needed all right, so that is it for the editing portion of the Quick Start Guide, but we're not done yet. We still have some things we need to learn about GIMP in order to get the most out of it as a photo editor using GIMP. So if you're ready to get started on the next topic, let's do it.